Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. Now, we report a lot about how EVs are going to disrupt ground transportation, but there's another EV disruption coming that investors should be aware of. I know, I know. It's autonomy, it's robo-taxis. It's coming. I mean, we got to be ready for that. Yes, but what we're going to discuss today is about the disruption that's going to take place in the air. We're talking about EV tolls or electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. And specifically, I want to discuss eHang Holdings Limited or ticker symbol EH on the NASDAQ. eHang is a Chinese company founded in 2014. It's based in Huangpu, Guozhang, China. It has about 350 employees, has a current market cap of about 1.2 billion. And I think we invest in this company, didn't we? Uh, yeah, I think so. Now, disclaimer, we are not financial advisors. Do your own research investing is inherently risky. So uh, I think we bought it, yeah, in October of 2020 for $8.93 a share. We then sold it in January and February of 2021 at 80 to $93 a share. Nice. Yeah, we 10 x in less than four months. That went well, and we talked about that a lot on our Now You Know Investor Club, which you can join by supporting us at Patreon on patreon.com slash now you know. Now, I'm not telling you that story to gloat. I'm sharing this because that spike back in early 2021, it tells a story and I'd like to decipher it. Okay. So first let's discuss this industry and let's be real. The EV tall market is in its infancy. You can't tell me you know of anyone who regularly commutes to work in an EV tall, but I can kind of get behind this forecast. Uh, this one here shows a 52% CAGR or compound annual growth rate. And here's why I think they're doing that. And again, this is all just guesswork, right? No one can predict the future accurately, but VTOLs are currently at around a billion dollar market. Some would say on the low end, it goes up to probably around 12 billion on the high end. Um, and that's because there's lots of companies that are getting into this stage where they've figured out the technology. And in fact, if you're wondering, like, well, what companies you're talking about, Zach? Well, there's many of them. Here's 39 of them. That is not an exhaustive list. There are more than that out there working on this technology because the TAM is huge. TAM being total addressable market. To me, this is almost like the reinvention of the airplane and the helicopter. What do you mean by that? So airplanes are awesome, but you can only use one if you go to an airport. That's why most of us don't fly on an airplane every day, right? Similar thing to a helicopter. I need to catch my ride uh, in a helicopter at a helipad. So outside of the very rich, most of us rarely ride in these types of transportation, which means that they are out of the question for our everyday transportation needs. But an eVTOL could become an everyday transportation vehicle. Now, it won't start that way. Most likely, it'll still start off as a way for wealthy folks to bypass traffic and make shorter hops between, let's say, New York City and the Hamptons, for example, or L.A. and Santa Barbara. But eventually, the idea is that as the economies of scale increase, a ride in an EV tall should get cheaper and cheaper to the point where many people will be able to afford regular trips around town and between cities. Now, what it's taken to get to this point in the technology has been switching from aviation fuel to electric. So to get the fuel costs down and to reduce a lot of the noise. And for that, battery energy density had to go up and battery prices had to come down. Now we are approaching the sweet spot. It's getting sweeter and sweeter every year. As battery chemistries get better, more energy dense and safer, and the price per kilowatt comes down, it's making the economies of eVTOLs more and more attractive. And if we add in the autonomy part, then we're going to get to ditch the human pilot, which saves on labor costs and weight which is a huge additional savings. Kind of like when we go from Ubers to the Tesla network. Right, and autonomy in the air is a way easier problem to solve than autonomy on roads. Right, about 90% of the air miles traveled today are actually done autonomously in autopilots. Like, like autopilot. Exactly. Like yes. not Tesla autopilot, but like what autopilot was named after autopilot. <laughs> right, because think about this for a second. There's nothing really in the sky. I mean, there's some planes, but relative to the ground, all in one plane, mm -hmm. you have multiple planes mm -hmm. in the air. And so it'd be hard to hit something in the air. So solving autonomy and getting regulatory permission for EV tolls could happen even sooner than ground transportation autonomy. So going back to eHang, the news out of China last week was that eHang just got approved from the Civil Aviation Administration of China, or CAAC, for its unmanned aerial vehicle, a UAV, the EH-216S. So it's unmanned. Does that mean that it'll only carry packages? No, sorry for the confusion. Some of this may be because of translations from Chinese. Uh, unmanned because it's not piloted by a human pilot in the cockpit. So, okay, but you can still carry people in it. They just aren't pilots. Right, so the 216 carries two human passengers at the moment. 
And this certification from the CAAC gives eHang permission to start commercial flights. So eHang started working with the CAAC back in 2021 and has flown more than a thousand days and nights to complete all of the certification objectives. They say they had 40,000 test flights to meet 500 specific test items. Now, the current range is not that high. A lot of you, when you see this at 22 miles or 35 kilometers, are going to go, oh, hang on, then it's just a toy. But I'd like to push back. If you're trying to drive across New York, let's say, that's not 22 miles. That's six, mm -hmm. right? If you're trying to go from, I don't know, uh, LA airport to SpaceX headquarters, that's not 22 miles, mm -hmm. right? That's uh, probably 15. So what would take you an hour on the ground or an hour and a half, you could do in just minutes in the air. So watching this video here from eHang, uh, you get to see the actual vehicle in flight during test, but you also get to see this kind of CGI rendering of what the future will look like. And I know that's not probably going to work out to be exactly that way, but I would like you to just imagine for a second that this could all happen, because I think the big pushback against this is, well, that's just crazy. Well, and part of your brain is instinctively just trying to help you and trying to go like, nope, hey, guess what? We're cave people. I'm a caveman, and uh, this stuff isn't possible. I'm just here to eat berries and, and catch rabbits and whatever. Um, so all of this stuff, no, we're not even going to think about it. Because if I had to think about it, I'm wasting calories thinking about it. I need to focus on surviving for the winter. That's how your brain works. I, I'm so sorry to say it. We're all... We're all, you know, part Cro-Magnon here, and your body wants to save calories thinking about it, but also it doesn't want to go off spending uh, energy, you know, think, you know, doing stuff with this when it thinks that it's probably just going to kill you. I'd like you to pretend that you're on the TV show The Waltons, okay? okay. Um, if you haven't seen it before, we'll put a little picture up here to, you know, you're in the, I think it was like the 1920s or 30s, or 30s yeah. living on a, you know, a remote a mountain. Mm -hmm. You've got a truck mm -hmm. um, and you drive it into town at 20 miles an hour. Okay. But I'd like you to picture if someone came to town one day and said, I'm going to tell you about the future, folks, <laughs> right. in a hundred years. This is what L.A. will look uh -huh. like. And in the future, we don't need horses. We have motorized carriages called automobiles. They would just be like, no, that is what that's so dangerous. Cars going over 20 miles an hour, millions of them. Yeah, no way. So what I'm saying to you now is, could this future happen where you have thousands of drones flying over your head? You'd be like, no way, that's too dangerous. Uh, no, computers are going to fly them safely. And that's what I'm saying. So if you can picture that for a second, just allow yourself to say, well, maybe it could happen. It would be pretty cool because it would eliminate a lot of the traffic and it would be a quick and cheap way to fly. And I'm going to say right now that it is absolutely going to happen because it will be cheaper than helicopters. Right. And you might be saying, well, how do you know that, Jesse? I just want you to do a little bit of research into what it takes to fly a helicopter, mm -hmm. all the complicated stuff that helicopters that we have to contend with and all the maintenance that has to take place with a helicopter. Well, and, and I'd like and to all the fuel. I'd like to point out that in this video from Ehang, um, they're showing what can happen when you stall a couple of the rotors. You can't stall one of the rotors on a helicopter or you crash. I mean, you might be able to restart it, but um, you've only got one chance, basically. Whereas with this, you can have a bunch of failures. You could have a bird hit, for instance, that takes out one of the propellers and still land safely. But I mean, you have a lot of backup chances where, right. again, in a helicopter, um, yes, you can do an auto rotation or whatever, but it's A, really hard. Also, you can't take out the rear rotor because that would be bad. That's also right. bad. You have to be, I mean, it's extraordinarily hard to fly a helicopter. So Ehang is unique in that it's a Chinese company developing EV tolls in China. So working successfully with China's regulatory body, that's a positive and a negative. Okay, positive because Ehang is way out in front in terms of getting certified for commercial passenger flight in Chinese cities. Negative in that it may be because the certifications may not be as rigorous as European and US regulations. So what will make the stock go up and down basically will follow their flights. And what, what I mean is if Ehang starts flying passengers successfully, I think their stock is likely to rocket upwards. But if there is an accident, especially a deadly one, and especially if there is social media footage of it, then the stock will likely plummet. Going back to the stock, I wouldn't be surprised to see the stock continue to edge up as commercial flights begin in China. Now, this might be a play for your portfolio, something to consider. Um, a lot of people out there have been asking us like, well, I believe in Tesla, but I don't want to have my entire portfolio dedicated to an EV company. And here's where I'm saying, I think this is another disruptive technology. I'm not saying, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not saying to invest in Ehang or any EV tall company, but I am saying that it is likely the next big disruptive transportation technology. 
and you might want to be part of it. Mm. So joining our investor club means access to our Slack. And that is where we can discuss this with really intelligent investors, people who are much smarter at this than we are, where we can deep dive into these topics and follow them. Um, and so if you want to join us on Patreon, we urge you to try that because it supports the work we do. It also gives you access to a lot of great bonus club videos we do every week, CEOs and founders uh, that we interview all the time, exclusive live streams we do with them so you can ask them questions, um, along with this amazing Slack we have with over a thousand people who are talking about this kind of thing every week. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on Disruptive Investing.